for the, for the question. God is good. Love. God is love. Right. That was an easy one. Everybody wanted that in, in did I get confirmation class. Did I get the wrong? You did. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, no. No, God is good, but not wrong, God is love. Everyone, right. <laughs> everyone, everyone, everybody wanted that one in confirmation class, so it was easy to remember. But um, okay, we've got we're going to God is love. I was at a wedding two weeks ago, and uh, they read what most of the weddings read, First Corinthians thirteen, and they got to they got to four, verse four, and I started listening to it a different way. So I want to read it, and I want to read it again. Love is patient. Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. And I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, if God is love, and this is the definition of love, and this is the definition of God. And it sounds super simple, but it hit me between the eyes, and I thought, if, if the God that I worship doesn't fit this, maybe I've got God figured out wrong. So I kind of went back, went back home again, and I started reading it, and I started looking at love is patient, and God is patient. How patient is He? It's unbelievable. Uh, God is kind understatement of the century. He does not envy. He does not boast. He came to earth in the form of Jesus Christ as, a, as an infant. Bethlehem. He fits that perfectly. He's not rude. He's not self-seeking. He lets his, he lets his creation help him in his, in, his, in his endeavors here. I mean, he could do anything he wanted to on his own, but he involves us in everything that he does. And that's kind of what this whole mission trip is it's so it's so cool how he involves us in what he's already doing. Um, he's not easily angered. He keeps no records of wrongs, which is what Jesus Christ is all about. Uh, love is not the light of evil, but rejoices in the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth himself. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. He never gives up on us through all eternity. Um, love never fails. God never fails. I, I always heard this as the wedding, the wedding verse. And I started reading it as a definition when I got home. And I just read it over and over and over again. And I loved it. And I mentioned it to a couple people and they said, but, and except. And I'm like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's it right there. That's the definition of God. Does it fit? So, anyway. We bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we, um, we know that you are the creator of everything, that uh, there's nothing that would be here without you, and that uh, your love is what holds everything together. It's the, it's the pattern, it's the design, it's, it's, what, it's what everything is intermixed with, this tapestry of what's called life. And, uh, and this definition of, of who you are and and how much you love is still just too much to comprehend for humans. But um, we ask that you continue to be patient with us and include you and include us in everything that you do and guide us and just keep us growing in, uh, in faith and in, and in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. The next time that we gather is November 7th. What day of the week is that? That uh, Thursday, I think? It is Thursday. Uh, so next Thursday, the 7th, uh, who would be willing to do our opening devotion for that evening? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was good to be with you uh, a week or so ago as we got together as, uh, to help you prepare for the, the trip. Uh, just some things to remind you of would be uh, journaling. Did anyone get a chance to do the devotion and the journaling that it recommends with regard to each of the lessons? If you find it, you'll find it in your training manual somewhere that there are some journal pages. Uh, that can be great practice. 
and I've got to make sure. Did you get one? Yes, I have. I'll let you swipe that one for this evening. Thank you. Uh, so stay at that. Uh, paperwork. Uh, I think there's a couple background checks to get in with. Uh, passports. Jeff is discovering when you renew your passport, they give you a new number. A new number. So yeah. he is going to, uh, and we've got several still outstanding in terms of applied. As soon as you get that, we need a color copy, and you can make color copies here at St. Andrew of the picture page uh, in order to book your ticket. Uh, if, so, if indeed we do need to have that to book the ticket. That's the other question, too. I've got well, ask. I think what we're needing will be the name that's that appears on your passport that's and that's your birthday. <laughs> And some of you may have middle initials, some of you may have full given name, all of those things. So get that stuff, get the paperwork into us as quickly as possible. Reading. We've been able to begin some of the reading. Uh, there's a wealth of reading up there to do. You've got to get at it right away. If you wait for the last couple of weeks, it will overwhelm you. Uh, some of it is easy reading, other is more difficult and more challenging. I found it, it took me the longest time to plow through African friends and money matters. There's just so much there. And, but stay at that reading. Again, uh, one of the great compliments our teams from St. Andrew receive from Shallon is the fact that the reading's done and teams end up being... Uh, going into the field within hours of the first day. Uh, there are other teams that arrive that he recognizes they're not ready, and they might spend two to three days with him getting ready to serve. So uh, get that reading done. Shots, we have yet not heard from Dr. B. How many of you were with your Dr. B when he did his Saturday clinic? That's very, very helpful kinds of stuff. As soon as we get a date from him, Confirmation will let you know uh, when he is coming to do that. I have a question, uh, and maybe I just need to do my own reading. Like yellow fever, is that something that you need I routine? Think it's, or no, you need no. I think that's like 10 years they last. No, we're good. If you've had it, if you had it for a previous trip with us, you're good. Mm -hmm. But you will need to take your yellow shot card with you. The yeah. documentation on that. Uh, more than likely you won't be asked for it, but if you're asked for it and don't have it, oh, it creates huge trouble and problems for you. In, in fact, you can be separated from the team mm -hmm. for several days. And quarantined. Quarantined. Just, just to try You'll get that when you get your yellow fever shot. Whenever you've had a yellow fever shot, you've always gotten a yellow card, evidently. Or that may be, or what? Yellow card is a specific one, but you can also add all the other ones. To yeah, it. you can add to it, but that is a documented shot that you have to have with you. Uh, missionary Shallon Trump is in the States. His wife is, we've not heard whether she's delivered yet. He will be coming to St. Andrews sometime in December. We do not know when, but it will be a great opportunity as soon as we get word for this team to meet with mm -hmm. him. Uh, we're hoping he will be with us on a Sunday morning, uh, but a great chance to, to spend some time. Uh, Shallon and his family, because we serve on the coastal region, uh, they love to join the St. Andrew teams because one, they're coming to the coast where there's a beach and sand and, and those kinds of things. And the other side is they enjoy working with the St. Andrew teams. So. Uh, not every team that serves spends as much time with the missionary as our teams have been privileged to do. And with the new baby, it'll be interesting to see how that a new baby and two older children, not very old. It'll be interesting to see how that comes together this year. So. We're estimating the cost of the trip with travel, accommodations, putting on the clinic, all of those things are going to average about 3000 per person. Uh, what that 3000 per person covers is tickets and insurance, 
ground transportation, meals, housing, uh, there will be very little opportunity for you to spend money while you're there other than to the things you <coughs> want to bring back as some mementos and souvenirs. That also, uh, that 3000 also funds the clinic in terms of uh, uh, there are costs uh, in, in, in funding the clinic. What St. Andrew does is we pick up two-thirds of that cost, leaving a third to you to be responsible for. Uh, and some people, and we're, we're not uh, embarrassed to ask that if you can afford to pay for more of that and contribute more, you're certainly welcome to do. We've had a number of people who have done that. What that simply does is it leaves more money in the kitty for the next trips to fund future trips. So. Uh, so that's an opportunity and I know for some there are some funding needs and we're looking at ways of making it possible for everyone to be a part of the team so uh, those are the things to be looking for uh, your contribution we would be looking for that to be uh, occurring uh, by the time that we head out Pastor Short other instructions I need to be giving on that um. We have a new flight schedule. Okay. We're going to need commitment from people this week. Okay. We need to book by October 31st to confirm the dates, I mean okay. the prices. Um, this schedule, which is a new one from what some of you have seen, uh, it's new as of today. Uh, we depart St. Louis on February 1 at 12.55 p.m. We'll be going to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Amsterdam, from Amsterdam to Nairobi, uh, from Nairobi to Mombasa. Um, we return 15 February. We depart Nairobi at 5, 10 p.m., their time. We return to St. Louis at 1.02 p.m., our time, on the 16th. Am I straight through? No. <laughs> we go from a great question. Mombasa, Nairobi, Nairobi, and Yeah, we actually. Mombasa to Ambassador. It's almost, we go from Mombasa, Nairobi, Nairobi to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Dallas, Fort Worth, or I guess that's DTW. Detroit. No, no, Detroit. That's Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Detroit. It'd be better if it were Dallas because yes. of the <laughs> it's winter time. But we'll do Detroit and then uh, St. Louis at 12:20 p.m. And the big thing about all of this, and and it keeps coming up in all of our training, and Jim keeps stressing uh, with all this, is to be ready to be flexible. <laughs> be ready to be flexible. You're traveling in winter time. Yep. But God is in the details. <laughs> Quick question for you on the on this. I don't know if you got my email or not. Pardon me. I don't know if you got my email or not. The only question on that new itinerary was you have seen it. That's you, the first time you've seen it. Or even on the old one. Yeah. Um, are we are we planning a trip? And that my question is, how many days in the field are we going to be? How many days? What? How many days in the field are we going to be? I don't know. You can look at that and see. Well, the reason I'm asking is because if we had four days of medical clinic for the day between, that was five. Right. Are, are we are we definitely going to go for that two weeks? Okay. Or in on the other times? So we have other. Are we are we building the trip and then filling in time over yes, there? Yes, we are. Okay. <coughs> yes. Yes. <coughs> yeah. And Shara indicated. I'm not sure you've met that with 14 of us. Um, there would we would only be at one site rather than splitting us up right. into two teams. We'd be together as one team. If we were going with more, we would perhaps be split up into two teams. I was just looking. At, I was looking at the 15 days and thinking if we've got four days of medical clinic, that's a lot of extra days. Mm -hmm. and, oh, we? <clears throat> it may be a longer medical clinic. What was it last time? I think it was three or four, wasn't it? Really? Was it five? You did five. Was it five days? Plus, oh, you saw patients on Sunday. Yeah. Right. It was okay, it was five days. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, as as I, did, I was just asking the question because I didn't know if we had time on either one of those. Well, we you know that we get there about midnight in uh, Mombasa, yeah. Yeah. so we will lose that day. 
So by the time and, and then leaving at five, you'll lose that day. Mm -hmm. So we lose two days on either end right. there on site. And putting so, something in the middle is not a bad idea. Or, yeah. That was suggested. Was yeah, we plan to there. not work on Sunday. Check your schedules and make sure that fits for you. And uh, uh, we're going to be booking tickets. And we'll need to have a conversation after with the guy in court. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we will be also doing the insurance uh, that will be uh, to um, cancel with no excuse. It's a very expensive insurance, but it's more expensive, particularly if all of us, for some reason, if we decided as a church, if our leaders decided. You recoup those costs with one cancellation. That's right. Well, yes, that's right. All it takes is so, one person for whatever reason can't go and you recoup the full cost. We're not doing that so much for convenience of people to make it easy to back out or not, so forth. So don't see it that way, but we're doing it uh, out of respect for people's concerns, reservations, situations, world situations, that sort of thing. And, uh, uh, and I don't know that if Senate were to say, we recommend you do not do this. In fact, you may say, you're not going, uh, if there's a full refund through them. Uh, again, this will be part of the insurance. You'll have one of your three, <coughs> at least three insurances that you'll have. So you're going to be... On the other side, of it, we trust God to be in the details and taking care of everything. That is exactly true. And we have found that to be such a blessing. Uh, but it's nice not to have to worry about... Right. Losing the personal investment you're making right. and the investment the church is making yes. for the trip. Uh, we've got, again, probably 900 questions to answer, and we don't need to answer them all yet this evening. What we're going to do, our, 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 tonight we're going to be talking a bit about the logistics of traveling and living abroad. So you've got a note card in front of you. I'm going to give you two minutes to write down on that one note card, right? One, two, three. What, what are the practical concerns that you have about traveling and living, traveling to Kenya and living in Kenya for a couple of weeks? Write them down very quickly. Ugali. Ugali. Write them down. <laughs> Things are well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I never tasted it. It doesn't have much taste. <laughs> Practical concerns. I can tell you, having been, I don't have nearly as, if I were going, I wouldn't have nearly as many practical concerns the second time. I'm kind of, I'm wondering still. Again, flexibility is a key, and so, what? And part of what we want to do is, uh, and when you've got that passed in this way, and uh, we're going to be watching a little bit of uh, some video for a little bit. <laughs> okay, what'd you share? Oh. Oh, shit. Let's explore some of the practical aspects of your trip. We'll cover some of the things you need to do before you go, tips on packing and dress, and what to expect in terms of where you'll stay and what you'll eat. We'll also talk about jet lag and ways to stay safe. By now, you should already have a few things underway. You should know if you'll need any vaccinations and have or be in the process of getting the documents you need. This includes your passport, possibly a visa, and another photo ID, such as your driver's license. You do not want to lose your passport when traveling. In the worst case scenario, you would have to go to the American Embassy and prove that you're an American. 
This can take a long time. In fact, you might have to deal with it the entire trip. So just in case, also take a photocopy of the passport identification page that you keep separate from your passport. Another great idea is to have a copy of this document and a certified copy of your birth certificate back home with a friend or relative. You'll also have an airline ticket. Most likely, it'll be an electronic ticket. You can bring a copy of the flight confirmation, but typically, your passport or other ID is all you'll need in some cases. You might have a paper ticket, and if you have connecting flights or are using more than one airline, this may be the case. Keep your paper ticket in a safe place before and after you arrive. Next, let's talk money. You'll only need money for a few incidentals and souvenirs because most of your trip is paid for up front. Your group leader can tell you how much you need since it varies by country. Whatever the amount, bring cash, not traveler's checks. Almost anywhere you travel, American dollars are accepted. If you do need to use local currency, it's easier to exchange dollars than traveler's checks. You'll want to bring fresh new bills and denominations of 50 or 100. Also bring one credit card, generally a Visa card is the most universally accepted. One last thing about preparing for your trip is to be physically ready. You may be doing a lot of walking, and this can include going up and down stairs. Elevators and escalators may not be as common overseas as they are here. The two key things to know about packing is one, pack light, and two, you'll be carrying your own luggage. Even if you have a rolling bag, you'll still have to carry it from time to time. Bring one bag to check and one to carry on the plane. In the carry-on, bring a change of clothes and anything that you can't easily replace, like prescription medication. Also, be sure to know what you can bring on the plane. <coughs> to find out the latest rules and regulations, go to the Department of Homeland Security at the website dhs.gov. Be smart as you decide what to bring. You can wear the same clothes more than once. In your manual, you'll find a detailed packing list. Common sense can also be your guide on what to leave at home. Don't bring any personal items you wouldn't want to lose. Don't bring your pager or PDA. Now, you may want to have your cell phone for the airport, but be careful. You don't want any surprises on your bill. Don't be so like Jeremy. your coverage and charges yeah. for international <laughs> calls before you go. How you dress is an important reflection on you as a missionary. Keep these three things in mind. First, be modest. What's okay here could be considered improper in another country. Second, be culturally appropriate. This is a show of respect, and it helps make you a good guest. You may find that even in a tropical climate, shorts may not be appropriate for all occasions. In some countries, women may need to wear a skirt. Finally, dress for the work you'll be doing. If you're teaching, that might be dressy. If you're coaching kids, something more casual is okay. And don't forget a good outfit for church. Clothes that reflect your life at home, a college sweatshirt, a t-shirt for your local sports team, are often popular with the nationals. Feel free to bring these shirts or t-shirts. However, since the American flag is considered a political symbol, you should avoid clothes with the flag. <laughs> Let me give you, we've got a, and we developed this in the last trip or so, we've got a, a good packing list for you. Let's just run through that. Uh, we'll need to check with airlines right before we go because they can change regulations. What we recommend is one large, one large check bag that has to be under 50 pounds over 50 pounds and you pay enormous enormous what not 50 and a half either exactly it's got to be we will have some luggage scales but last time we had teams arrive with 56 pounds 54 and then it's a matter of shuffling and uh, so the best thing for you to do is make sure this one which is a check bag. You can put fluids over three ounces in here. Any fluids you probably want to put into 
sealable bags. No telling for the number of times it gets thrown around, shampoo, those kinds of things. Gallon Ziploc bags are very, very handy for that. This is called a carry-on. This size, standard size and fits in overhead bins. Anything you can't afford to lose ought to stay with you in your carry-on. Medications, uh, at least one change of clothes, all of those things that you can't afford to be without. You can also carry a personal item, and a backpack is a great personal item. You can put a lot in it. It slides under your seat in front of you. Uh, when you're in the field, it's a great to carry whatever you need for the day, including your large water, all of those kinds of things. These are, are handy, handy things to have. Then the other thing, and I have it somewhere. Oh, doesn't hurt to have a passport holder. Uh, where you put everything valuable. When I was there, I wore cargo pants and they went easily. Uh, keep your passport on you all the time. Cargo pants are great not through airports unless you want to be searched every time. Don't, don't fill up those cargo <laughs> those pockets. I, I wear cargo pants all the time. All you have to do is make sure all of your pockets are empty. Yeah. If exactly. they're not, it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue. We almost lost a member <clears throat> in but, St. Louis. <laughs> So those are the things to, to, to take with you. In, in your carry-on, any toiletries, anything they need to go, this is a quart Ziploc bag. You've got to fit anything, nothing over three ounces. And three ounces on the label too. No, it's three three ounce of half full. That is no, <laughs> it's a three ounce bottle. Yeah. And I would encourage you, unless you find, I have a very heavy bag like that that has a zipper on it because mm -hmm. I'm always ripping mine the top mm -hmm. rips off and stuff take two or three extra of those Eight, extra of those so that, extra of the yeah. gallon ones yeah so that you oh so can do we them. know for sure that a second uh, check bag is not because the reason I'm asking is we we'll have to check when okay. we it'll it we'll check them before we get there if we're sometimes they have allow two check bags stuff like that we may need extra if we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, if we're going to get the, yeah, mm -hmm. the temperature thermometers and the blood pressure cuffs and the pads. And mm -hmm. The other thing, in, and this is your personal list. We haven't put the medical list together, but take a look at the health items. Mm -hmm. uh, butt repellent, 100% DEET. Uh, the last time Dr. B made it available through him, and uh, that typically comes in larger quantities than three ounces, so that's going to need to be in your check luggage. Sunscreen, you've got to take it. One of the things that you don't realize is that because it's very, we're one degree off the equator, as soon as the sun is up at 615, it's as bright as noonday sun here. And it's that bright and intense until it sets. Uh, we got some pictures of some cows on the beach and you look at it and you go, that's noonday sun. Now that was 615 in the morning. Uh, because they're close to the equator, you know, the physics of it is it's not passing through a lot of, of uh, atmosphere. It's as intense and bright mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock when the sun comes up as it is at noon. And it's that way all day. Hand sanitizer, take some. You need to be careful that you don't offend people. They shake hands and you're getting out your sanitizer immediately. So be a little sensitive to that. Pastor Short has the best kind of hat to wear. On your head, <laughs> sort of. Sorry. And and it's and you need to bring a hat with a brim all the way around. A ball cap doesn't work well. Don't bring an expensive one. You might leave it on the plane. <laughs> exactly. Three for you, Paul. Three. <laughs> Two of these. Two of these. Now you mentioned and one Tilly hat on the plane. Last week, that they. Always wear long pants and college shirt. Right. Well, that'll be on our list here. Oh. Oh, long sleeves? No, no, no. 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 Oh, yes. I can't wear my sleeveless stuff. Okay. Yeah. Bring sunglasses. We encourage you to bring Imodium. Potentially Pepto-Bismol, whatever you need. Also, we recommend that you get a, a script from your doc for Cipro, which can uh, take it, bring it with you. And that can handle a number of, and you've got plenty of docs here who can advise you on how to take it. 
Our malaria medication is malarum. It, uh, and it's, it's usually in those little punch things and you need to write the date for each one. Figure out what time you're going to take it in Kenya because you started ahead of time. Uh, and uh, if you're going to take it at breakfast, figure out what breakfast time in Kenya. Mark, because you're supposed to take them 24 hours apart. So it'll be, it doesn't do it good to take it at breakfast in Central Standard Time and the next time you take it is breakfast in African time. You've got to calculate that 24 hour uh, time. Eight period. hours ahead in Kenya. Eight hours ahead. Jim, does it have to be Malaram? Wait, is there a reason why we take Malaram? It, First of all, we say see your doctor. Okay. Number two, if you have taken the stuff in the past that you take once a week, uh, you can do effect. that. Yeah, without having any issues, you can do that. But Pastor Trump asked us. I mean, he almost requires uh, if you have not taken that before with no issues, do not come over with that once a week stuff. He would rather you be on the. It can cause violent dreams. On the pink melanoma. So that one that you take every day. That, that well, I ask because doxycycline is what I've always taken before. Doxycycline has a side effect of um, photosensitivity. What does? That's doxycycline. Doxycycline. Doesn't. So Don't usually when people hand. take it, they're completely recovered. And so, it, and, and uh, melanoma doesn't have a lot of side effects. Okay. Just something to consider. It's more expensive. And if you're like me, you can just number, put the dates on your packets on the back. Dates and, and time. And, and you, then you'll know, did I take it? <laughs> I sure did. No, I haven't taken yeah. it. Just as a side, thinking about adding on what you had just said about taking your breakfast there and breakfast here and getting your time and stuff, take breakfast there and so figure out your mm, time exactly. here. here. If, if someone can calculate that for us, there. what time do you eat breakfast? About That's seven there? Nice. You won't have time during the day. At 7 30. About 7 30. If somebody can figure out that time for everybody and say, you need to take it at this time and when you're in America and that time when you're in Kenya. Powdered Gatorade, that can be very useful if uh, that uh, of replenishing electrolytes, those kinds of things. Toiletries, all the things. We suggest two toothbrushes. It's very easy <laughs> to simply put your toothbrush under the sink and go. Oops. Uh oh, I've contaminated that one. So we suggest a couple toothbrushes. Uh, and a roll of toilet paper. It never hurts in, when you're in a remote in region. In your backpack. Mm -hmm. uh, and they take up, if they will fit in this size bag if you pull out the, the, the little Whoa. cardboard roll and it flattens and goes very easily. Mm -hmm. And it's great for, for blowing your nose and other essential duty. <laughs> but I will tell you, as many times I've been over, I've never Jean always, when she goes, she always takes a roll of toilet paper. Always forget it. I've never needed it. So that's just for what it's worth. Personal items. But alarm clock. It's better to have it than not need it. Uh, you may, uh, depending on the accommodations, and uh, you may need a flashlight and batteries, but just take a little tiny one. That uh, doesn't take much. Paper and pen, a Bible. Some of our folks discovered that one of the great ways they could bless Kenyans with was to leave their a Bible with them. Uh, and we haven't done that, but we came close. Mm -hmm. Came very close. Uh, Joyce, Joyce did that when, did. when she was there. Uh, Seth did that. I stand very Paul correct. Paul and Silas, cool. Paul and Silas <laughs> We thought that Jerry Prodigal was going to leave his, but we were able to get a 20 mm -hmm. million for Joyce. What? Else? what? He left the NIV. <laughs> uh, I have several ESV. <laughs> what, what you may want to do is you may want to take a thinner Bible that doesn't take up as much space in your bag and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe take something that uh, you could bless somebody with and who doesn't have a Bible and leave it with them as a gift. So. English, most of them. Uh, in, in Kenya, it was a British colony, and when you go to school, all classes are taught in English because there's a number of dialects except for your Swahili class. They will take a Swahili class, but everything else is taught in English. Uh, so uh, they, they would be blessed by an English Bible. Uh, bring your training guide. It's got some great daily journal materials. A uh, camera, batteries, take whatever batteries you're needing, extra disk for storage capacity of pictures. 
uh, and take plenty of, of batteries. A personal music player, and that might be your earplugs, or you may need other kind of earplugs, because most places you're going to be sharing accommodation, some of you with people who probably, my guess is there's at least one or two people on this trip that snore. One or maybe two. some that snore rather loudly. <laughs> I've traveled with some of these. I've slept close quarters with some of these men, and I can testify that they're on some kind of table and snore. Uh, electric converter plug. What kind of electric do they have? It's 220. And it's the British system, so if you have the converter plug for the UK, you're set. Okay. Credit card. They recommend Visa. Contact your issuer about the dates you are out of con country. They could cancel, they could close your card down by for suspicious activity. Cash, we've talked that over. I, probably $200 is more than enough in most cases. The only place you really have to spend money is when you're in an airport for whatever you need to get there. Uh, once we're there, there are no food costs, there are no travel costs. Uh, what your cost will be will be the things you want to bring back with you. Unless things have changed, you will need those two crisp $20 bills and a crisp $10 bill That's down for your next visa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's coming up. Uh, phone optional. Uh, don't be like Jeremy, though, of all those current commercials. Know how to turn off expensive services, which can include things like your... Uh, locator for, you know, if you're taking pictures with your iPhone and don't turn off the locator. Really? Pastor Short has some pictures that are priceless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they indeed are. You may want to take some energy well, bars for travel while you're there. Uh, travel documents, passport, passport holder, uh, copy of the passport packed separately in each bag you carry. Uh, it'd be useful to have one of each, of each of the bags you carry. Photo ID other than passport, best thing is your driver's license. Visa information, what we will be sending, that's not a visa card, we will have to do, uh, fill out a visa and we'll be sending you with some information when you get to Nairobi or if it's a Mombasa, You'll have to apply for a visa to stay in Kenya, and we'll give you all the information you need. And they not change that. You can still get it there. We'll I'll check the part. We'll check the time go. Right. That took last time was two new crisp twenties and a crisp ten. They, Those they're going to want new builds. They, they don't have to be new, but they have to be in very very good shape. Mm -hmm. What are what are they? Two That's cash. Two twenties and a ten. Uh, your immunization record, that yellow fever card, your insurance uh, records, contact info of family and friends so that in your luggage somewhere we know how to, to reach folks. Your airline tickets and itinerary. Men's clothing. When we're serving in the field, men wear long pants. What I suggest is, what we recommend is not jeans. This is a very hot place and uh, if you do any laundry, jean, and we're on the coast, jeans take forever to dry. They're wet constantly. So lightweight cargo pants are, uh, and they, they don't take much, as much room in suitcases. They're not as heavy, those kinds of things. Collared shirts, uh, light cotton collared shirts really serve men well. In terms of they're cool, they, uh, this is the kind of outfit. It so looks like the Columbia and Magellan Departments and Academy are now local, great resources for some of that. Okay. Um, some of that clothing, so you might just just be sure on those Christmas those shirts that they're at least eighty percent cotton. Yeah. Because the more polyester it has in it, the hotter those suckers are. Yeah. Cotton shirts really are much much more comfortable. Remember how to go back with them? I did not wear. Many polo shirts because they simply get hot, and it was a, a light cotton shirt. Uh, some kind of church outfit for men, underclothing, closed-toed shoes. You really have to be careful in the field. Uh, closed-toed shoes are whenever we're away from your beach accommodations. Uh, tennis shoes, shower shoes, uh, 
a simple, I took a little light jacket reindeer kind of thing. It's useful to have that just in case it's needed. Nightwear, uh, a modest swimsuit, and then casual wear, which were shorts and tees, uh, where you're staying. Women's clothing, we are going to a predominantly Muslim area. Uh, women wear long skirts or dresses, full length. Uh, sleeved blouses with high collars. Uh, we have high necklines, a church outfit, uh, all the same kind of things uh, that for men. But uh, for us guys wearing this kind of, this would be the kind of outfit that I'd wear when I was there. And then I wore my hiking boots all the time because one, uh, it's just they were my most comfortable for the work I was doing. Up and down with kids. Any other things on packing? Our yeah. team leader needs to bring a Sharpie to mark water bottles. Yeah, and everybody else can bring some too, just can't take yeah. um, Something I failed to put on that list, Jim, earlier was to, particularly for those of you that are coffee drinkers, mm -hmm. um, they Ooh. do not, as much coffee is made in Kenya, they do not brew coffee in Kenya. It's only like Nescafe Instant. Yeah. It's pretty puny coffee. <laughs> um, so I would encourage you to look for your favorite instant coffee and you can buy so much of it now in these little packs all the way from the vias at starbucks uh, to all kinds of stuff and uh, find those find them on sale load up with them and a lot of the extra that we'll that we might have we'll leave for pastor trump he's uh, a starbucks fan yes he is so. well yeah but we may not be at the at the same place you you never know about coffee Right. If it's essential for you, you take what you need. <laughs> we'll usually have access to hot water in one form or fashion. Right. So, uh, As on shoes too, like you said, the shower shoes and stuff. stuff. When, like afterwards and stuff, when you're not out in the field, like simple flip flops and shoes were good because we weren't trudging around in the fields then. And even that's what Taylor ended up leaving and, and hmm. stuff too. But exactly. when we're back at the house. I when you're back for your house. evening accommodations, Western attire, what you'd wear, Casually here would be appropriate. And it's a hot climate. But uh, in the field when we're serving. Uh, here's the stuff people are worried about. Squat toilets. But before you get into that, uh, there, there is one other thing. Uh, once, once we get in country, there will be no alcoholic beverages. Don learned that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, just as just is, is, is a, a point of you know, we may be staying in a place where they have them, but we won't have them. I would add flushable wipes. Honeys. Mm. Yeah. I mean, because who knows if we got stuck in an airport for two days, mm -hmm. we might have shower facilities. Mm -hmm. um, pleasant, not only for yourself, for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. No, good point. Thanks, Paul. Well, I'll add that to the... I'm going to add two things. We're going to add the coffee and flushable wipes. <laughs> you know all of this traveling and been stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, squat toilets. There will be squat toilets yeah. in the field. <laughs> They're not an issue since we're wearing dresses. Right. If we had pants on, <laughs> that'd be an issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, what to pack? Hopefully we've done some of that. Uh, laundry facilities. When uh, it is, I know the beach house where I stayed, they did our laundry for us. I took I wore one pair of clothes and had four to five changes, and and they they did that. Was that true also? Where the last? No, we season? had individual washing machines in each apartment. Okay. Mm -hmm. No dryers, but but washing machines and just those cargo pants that Jim is like wearing. Weightless. They would they would dry overnight, but like a pair of men's undershorts, that's about a two day process <laughs> to dry those suckers. <laughs> if you want to spend money. On underwear, ex officio is a great brand. It's expensive, but you only need two pair for ten days. Two pair. Safety of belongings. Two, two t-shirts. Two pairs. I want to ask. There you go. They dry within a couple of hours. They're very thin, very. And they, Don't put in by me. They're reliable. <laughs> they're com you, mo all of your Excellent. all of your. Uh, uh, you, you, all of your travel catalogs will have them. 
You do and not you get an REI. take clothing for 14 days. You no. Get it under the 50 pound limit. No, be prepared to wash. You no. need to be prepared to wash the things. And that's good. Because What's the difference? Because it's, I told you about that last time. That I, I thought I packed oh, light man. and I still had way too much stuff. Yeah. What's the difference with a checked bag? I mean, <clears throat> weight wise, is there anything different other than, I mean, you say 50 pounds? The checked bag is 50. So the, the bag alone bag. is 50? No, 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 no. no. The bag has everything in it. Okay. When, when they go and when you fill it up and they weigh it, it's got to be under 50 pounds. You're going to put it on their scales and it's going to come up and read it. And their scale may weigh heavy. Heavy. So we so try to keep it around 47. 47. Yeah. That way you're not in an airport throwing things away, saying, can you fit it? All of those kinds of things. And we'll have a scale here the morning we leave. And Everybody can be checking their luggage. If we have to do some switching around, we can do it here. So that'll help but a little bit. Five, six changes <coughs> more should be sufficient, and you'll have a chance to wash and take care of things. Uh, yeah. I remember last time that they, one whole suitcase that, in one and a half had just a bunch of food and stuff yeah. that we took over. Yeah. But still, both the girls and I, we all only had one, one check-in, one carry-on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I swear the girls and I were the only ones that had two bags that we were trying to carry through even to get to the check-on. Yeah. The rest of y'all didn't even do that. I didn't. I don't have two. Yeah. I, I wheel I, one. Because I hear like when we were training, we talked about that, but then when we got there, it was like, why are I, the girls and I the only ones? <laughs> I, I think I can fit everything in, you in that my whole birthday party. I fit in everything in, the, in half that size. And I, I so. all the time. So <laughs> it's coconut. <laughs> you name it. I had a <laughs> suitcase full of food for me. Are we going to have that suitcase for the Shawans with the brown sugar and stuff? We don't know. We don't know. We may. Again, that's what Since I'm they're going to have just going back, maybe it's probably not as much. Safety of belongings when not with him, the, the key is keep your stuff with you. Do not put your passport in a backpack. Ever. Keep it on your body. On your body. On your body. On your body. And uh, in uh, cargo pants, those kinds of things. Uh, keep it with you all the time. Uh, somebody uh, getting killed in the airport. We'll have a wonderful <laughs> funeral for you back here. Oh, they're gonna blow my up. We'll take you to the mall. My son is sending me all this stuff about you know what's going on in Nairobi, and he said, "I realize, mom, this is a role reversal." You know, but <laughs> years worrying about me. No, the, the key is if it is unsafe, we will do. That's part of why we have the insurance that we're doing. If it is not a safe time to travel, uh, Shawn and the LCMS will guide us on that. I am taking up life insurance on these two Internet phone service. Yeah. It, can be, uh, it can be good to bad. Our student calls just, I swear, we were texting home mm -hmm. daily, number, numerous times. Check with your carrier in terms of what you, your what's available. And it, uh, Kenya itself has excellent phone service. Oh, yeah. Pardon me, what did you say? Kenya has excellent phone service, yes. cell service. Are we going to have the cell phone like we realized? They will have, probably give us two cell phones. Just That's so you guys know, last time, I was always worried about calling home and how long. We, we spent $20. There was like $6 on it. We bought $20, and we probably left with 10 still on the phone. You can't use no. enough yeah. time on their cell and, phones and call uh, the United States. And Shallon gave us two cell phones, and it is use theirs. it is use theirs. It is inexpensive. They will give us two uh, two Kenyan phones to call the states, and it will be we inexpensive, inexpensive for the whole time. Don't even worry about it. In addition to um, emails and stuff. I, I wouldn't sign up for my phone. I just use theirs. It's clothing to bring. I hope we've answered that. Sleep schedule. Water. You drink only water that you know has been purified. Bottled water with a shrink wrap, wrap top. Including, like you mentioned earlier, brushing your teeth and everything. Use it to brush your teeth. Which is hard to do. Mm -hmm. I actually carry a little sock or something with me every time that is my faucet cover. 
just so you kind of put that in your head. Well, and no, as soon as I get there, I stick it over the faucet because I'm a habit person. And, and I know you. I'll stick my thing in toothbrush. Yeah. You're, you're kind of good. I just pull a sock over it, and I can't do it without That's removing cool. sock. Hey, great idea. Let's watch some more. Uh oh. Lost your signal. I'll shut down over here. We're talking too long, it went to automatic shutdown. Have a good number of your questions, practical questions, been answered yet? <coughs> For us newbies, can we have a list of everybody's names so we don't go? Yes, hey, we'll you have your vote. Four weeks a year. <laughs> we'll have all that for you. Does that come mm -hmm. together? Do you mean to tell me you weren't good on that first day when we introduced ourselves and wrote everybody's name down? Uh, I'm wonderful at the trick on the chart. <laughs> 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 the chart doc. Chart doc. Yeah. Uh, always taking good verse. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 to respect each other's privacy in regards to where you stay. It could be a hotel room with your own bathroom or a dormitory with shared facilities. <coughs> that respect of privacy becomes even more important when in close quarters. In fact, one team discovered they had only one shower and had to work out a schedule. Whatever type of housing you find yourself in, it's probably not going to be the same standard we have in the United States. Keep in mind your role as a guest and always be flexible and cooperative to what the local mission has set up for you. Be open-minded and gracious in trying the local food. It's likely to be different from what you typically eat and it will look different and smell different. The best advice, don't ask, just eat. <laughs> Part of your adventure. It's okay, we do recommend though, to make sure your food is properly prepared. Your local host will let you know where and what to eat. Typically, you don't want to buy food from a street vendor, but if you do, make sure that it's freshly cooked. If eating fresh fruit, be sure the peel is still on it. And check out your student manual for more details about food and eating on your trip. You may or may not be able to drink the local tap water. Your group leader can find out about the safety of the water before you go. And while you may need to be careful about the local water, also be careful to not get dehydrated. Dehydration can contribute to stress, tiredness, and other problems. So drink plenty of safe water or fruit juice as an alternative. Don't substitute alcohol and carbonated drinks for water. These can actually contribute to dehydration. They will be, they'll be providing a lot of water for us, a lot of Jet lag. It's a very real thing, and some of you may experience it. If you do, the best advice is a little mind over matter. Set your watch to the local time and don't think about what time it is at home. Stick to a normal routine. If you arrive in the morning, then stay up and active, and then go to bed at a regular time. But don't take a nap. That strategy can backfire on you. Great advice on that. Your safety is a prime consideration of your sending agency and the local host. The best safety tip is to stay with the group. Never venture out on your own. This is especially true for women. You may start to feel comfortable, want to break from the team and explore on your own, but it's simply not smart to do that. Again, stay with the group. It's also important, as we mentioned earlier, to keep your passport safe. You should keep it with you at all times. It's a good idea to get a small passport holder and wear it around your neck and under your shirt or jacket. Don't have your passport in a purse, backpack, or anywhere it can be easily grabbed. The same holds true for your money. However, in some places, you may want to have a small amount of cash in a pocket. In the very rare case that you're robbed, you'll have something to quickly give your assailant without exposing everything you're carrying. helps you prepare for your trip. Here's a quick recap. 
Bring the right documents and keep them safe and secure. Be physically ready. Bring only what you need. Leave the rest at home. Pack the right types of clothes. Know what you can and cannot bring on the plane. Be open, gracious, and flexible with food and housing. Ensure your personal safety by sticking with the group. By taking care of these practical matters, travel will be smoother for you and your team. You can also then concentrate on the more important aspects of the trip, learning about the mission and the local culture, and doing your best to serve. Thanks for joining me, and have a great trip. Practical questions of travel and accommodations fall over there. What haven't we answered that you need to know? I think one of the my experience with is, is with with travel is obviously stay hydrated, but stay away from anything with caffeine in it because it just dehydrates you. And I found that's a huge contributor to to jet lag. The other thing that I use um, is I use noise canceling headphones. You know, you can get them from about $100 to how much money you have. Um, and they will make you a more rested person on the other end. And if you're having, and they also, are, are you able to sleep with them when you get there in case you've got a snoring partner? Uh, <laughs> I've never, I've never tried that. I've used uh, uh, earplugs. Earplugs, yeah, all those kinds for of things. Other Fanny packs. What? Fanny packs. Absolutely. Fanny pack is good. Fanny That's pack is very are. good. Yeah. And the snoring thing was no joke. That was the only <laughs> medical kind of thing I took care of last time. We had to change three or four people's rooms because two guys didn't sleep for two days because mm -hmm. they had partners that snored. Mm -hmm. I think with the food, they made the point in, in the, that position when he came to talk to us, that nurse, about the fruits and stuff that needed peeling. But we had a lot of tomatoes there that we knew were just being washed with local water. But none of us got, anybody ever got sick with it, but they, was, other than that, the fruits Did just, they cook them always? No. They were in a lot of fresh salads. Wiki. We didn't think about it until about day five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I will tell you, you know, we ate washing. in the village, we ate in a village eight days in a row. Eight, uh, nine days in a row. We were there four days of service, we were there at church in four days and the mamas cooked and none of us on our team got sick from anything. And they also had uh, uh, onions and sliced tomatoes, kind of a roll. They were very tasty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ate them every day. And, and so uh, it, it would have been kind of rude not to, but I know it was later we thought, should we have done that? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? It was a mess. So. It's how they come from Nelly's On the other hand, I was that a problem? Why, if you don't wish to eat something, is that a problem? Just don't eat it. I don't like to make here, here, Here's the key, is Kenyans eat chakula chakula cham cham, <laughs> a meal in the mid-afternoon. They really eat one meal a day, a very large meal at 3 o'clock, about 2 to 3 o'clock, somewhere around there. They may want to serve you a Kenyan portion, which is a big portion, and... Uh, uh, you know, we were, you'll be eating breakfast and having, so that will, you'll be eating three meals. So uh, you just simply say, I can't eat that much. And two other, a couple other things to keep in mind. Normally what we've done in the past, the breakfast and the dinner in the evening are served where we stay in the hotel. So they're prepared there. And it's the uh, kind of the midday meal that will be served in field. Mm -hmm. And often, and, and with as much as we know the church leaders now, if some of you have any issues with portions and that kind of stuff, just let Jeff or I know, and, and we can just talk to the leaders and say, could you just have enough put quite as much in the bowl for this person? And we can handle that very discreetly, mm -hmm. rather than you having to do that and feeling awkward doing it. We don't have, and sometimes you're dishing out your own. Mm -hmm. you're, you're actually putting your own food on your own plate, and you can just you go by the portion. And, and well, I discovered I enjoyed Kenyan food. There wasn't yeah, anything that they served in Kenya that I didn't enjoy. Don't plan on losing weight there. You may not gain any, but you will eat very well there. They, in mm -hmm. the village, they did a lot of uh, kind of a stew that might have potatoes and carrots and some grisly meat in it. They would have ugali, which is their national dish, which is 
uh, a brown corn. It would be like a grits, except it would be a little drier and uh, yellow, made out of maize. Uh, they would have yeah, boiled yeah. kale uh, and, and as their you greens. Very healthy. And it's very, very healthy food. Tomatoes and onions yeah. kind of soup. If you're a grazer like I am, you need to make sure you take your energy bars for your backpack yeah. and maybe those little bags of okay. uh, trail mix and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because uh, you will not have opportunity to graze in the field. The one anxiety that I had is one of the days I picked up my water bottle and drank and realized it had a smoky flavor and realized I had picked up one of the new routines and it looked exactly like mine. Mm. Now I didn't have any problems. There was filtered with charcoal, but it wasn't the same water that, and I could tell immediately and I thought, oh, done to mm -hmm. myself. That's part of the reason for making sure you've got your water bottle marked with your name that you know is from a secure source that you keep uh, with you. Yeah, everybody bring your own your own uh, markers so you can label your bottle. To one, to and we'll have, we've got a room. team leader to bring a sharpie so that you know, we've got one to, to mark. I think two things with the food. One, I felt guilty of they were giving us the best they had. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, they are killing every chicken they own in this village for us daily. But we also are providing some of the food for them to prepare for mm -hmm. us, aren't we? Yes. Those so chickens it's not we like bought. they were like going to starve the rest of the year because they fed the, us. The food so well. that they are preparing. <laughs> Uh, is food that we have So they're even kind of eating better than the They're food eating we have better because we're, we're there. there. So the don't place. feel guilty about the food they're serving you. Uh, we're paying for our meal and the meal that. that, that uh, now, when we were okay. there, it may be, the, you know, the churches are poor and they will ask the church to supply something. And typically they will ask the church, you provide the ugali, which would be the least expensive portion of the meal that would be the brown like they are and so they are contributing also but uh, uh, they are going to cook their best for you uh, uh, but we're we're actually providing the money that allowed that to happen and also portion wise with any definitely take the smallest portion you know you're going to eat because you don't want to have them see you waste a morsel and then if you're like Rod Lather and I, you eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Haiti in June, and one of us ate fresh fruit that wasn't washed, and she got a parasite, and she's still sick. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. What, what you've got to do is be very, very careful on, on uh, where you eat at the hotel. Every, you've got to be very, very careful with that. Other questions, comments, things about travel, eating, Accommodations. Jason, you look like you had a question. Well, I was going to ask uh, when they come for help, you know, as what we're doing, are they coming from far away? I mean, they're not just yeah, they the potentially, local. They may have walked a good number of hours to get there, a number yeah. of kilometers. Now, would there be a chance that some of these people are maybe beggars too? They may ask for what we have and do we give it? You know, that's it. Shalom advises that we give away nothing. Okay. We'll work that through the church leaders. Mm -hmm. They'll be the ones that will be monitoring that and helping us with that. Mm -hmm. We will have to do that. That's have not what that guilty? book said. Have I felt guilty that we're all stopping? In this case, for we're, big we'll be working through our church leaders. Uh, except when you're in airports and out of, you know. Eat. But when we're in the compounds, we'll be working with the church That's leaders. Fine. Part of what program. you do is you have to be nourished to continue that. You, you're doing vital work that wouldn't be done, and they are and so thankful that you're there. They weren't planning on this being done. Yeah. I, I, could say, really I don't think I ever saw that. The only time we've seen it is when we were we went to town to the hardware store to buy the merchandise for uh, our renovation work, and our bus was surrounded. I mean, not surrounded. Exactly. There, there were a couple of three yeah. people that try to make an issue out of it and we didn't give a dime. We did not give a dime to it. And we'll talk well more fixed. about that when we talk in terms of cultural differences. Yeah. The Kenyans may be asking for you to assist them in some way. What you have to learn to do is to say, you don't say no, you simply delay. And say, I can't give that appropriate attention at this time. 
It's, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about cultural differences, uh, and we can get to that. But uh, they will be, they could be more straightforward about asking for your help. Speaking of money and uh, culture, uh, are we supposed, to, are we giving money for uh, Dylan for his wedding? Can I will. I have not gotten any further information. I will check that for you and send you an email. Yeah. And it's Elliot. 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 Yeah, Ellis. Sorry, you were close. We, we knew we were done. Yeah, it's twin. Yeah. Question here on clothes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I heard the underwear part of the you know, small <laughs> meetings. <laughs> socks. <laughs> no socks. <laughs> big deal. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. You got a pair of socks. Or a ten pair. A little more. I'm, 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 Whatever number you're taking, if it's five outfits, do five pair of socks. I'm always close. Man, Jewelry. You mentioned a rich watch, a rich watch. Mm -hmm. Should we leave wedding bags? I would suggest time? leaving. Uh, yeah. Uh, be careful on taking anything that's ostentatious. Mm -hmm. That that comes across. Uh, you know, I wear a a, a, a wrist watch and that's it. So I wear cheap one. And I take my camp wrist watch, which I can afford to lose. Now, I think we, we ought to be careful about jewelry and displays of wealth. Even a simple band. Mm -hmm. I would do that. Okay. I mean, so, we don't wear earrings. We do, I'll, you know, I'll band, the it. ones that we just bought from Claire's or something, we bought, had little earrings on. We didn't take, you know, diamonds and pearls. Big diamonds are probably a bad thing, but. <laughs> simple, simple, tasteful stuff. Other questions? It's an exciting trip. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get another note card and to take two or three minutes to write, what are you excited, what's your excitement about this trip that you want to share? We're going to go around and share names again like we did the first time, but uh, this time around, uh, take a couple minutes and write something that, uh, two or three, write up to three things you're excited about this trip. Also, what some people have done with clothing while people are still writing, a few have taken stuff that you may not necessarily want to have to bring back because you don't need it, but you've got it. You can maybe take it, wear it a day, and then leave it there and not have to bring it back. We did that last time. Like Several people. Shot I think there are a couple of suitcases and stuff. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it will be used. So if you distribute it your own, you're going so, against what all these books like running yeah, marathons in the winter, you throw away your old, put it your to winter stuff. So pack an extra pair of tennis shoes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. He sure. was really open to that. Uh, yeah, wasn't very much I, that. I wouldn't pack extra. I would simply be ready to leave behind because I one of the things, more there. you know, you don't want to. You want to take more than you need, but yeah. you might be ready to leave a Bible behind. Things uh, like that. Some, you know, it was mentioned here in an article of clothing with the favorite sports team. Those kinds of things. Cardinals, of course. We're advised not to give things away. And and 
we had what they call biscuits, cookies for our team, and there were a ton of them left over, and Shaman started to distribute them on the last day on our first trip, and it was chaotic, and we understood why uh, not to do that. Even our water bottles, they wanted our water bottles, some to put their water in, to mm. their toys, yes. but you can't distribute them evenly. And so I was like, no, I'm sorry. We, we reuse our water bottles. Mm -hmm. so that I we reuse, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, then one kid could get one, we'll sell it, so and so has one, and all they wanted were water bottles. You think, no big deal? But it was a big deal. Do we need to bring a water bottle? No. No. We'll Only if you want to travel with one. Yeah. Like an empty Nalgene. Pardon me? Like a Nalgene bottle break with you. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Keep in mind, if you're going through security with a water, water full of, bottle full of water, it'll be empty. You'll have to drink it very quickly or throw it away because they won't let you go through. Why don't you write down something you're excited about with regard to this trip? So introduce yourself and who, who, who wants to do first? I will. Seth Whitmer, um, possibly seeing some of my old clients, which I did last time. I said, Hans says. I said, hey. <laughs> you came Reconnecting. Back. You came Reconnecting. Back. Anybody else excited about that possibility? No, that I don't know. No, I which way don't. around the circle do you want to go, Seth? Uh, should I do all of mine? No, just one. I did it. Go there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Tell who you are and what are your excitements. Uh, my name is Bob Moore, and one of my excitements is uh, meeting and interacting with new people. I'm Pastor Short. I just, you know, one of my things is introducing John D. John D. I get to do that to the church leaders, um, hopefully in Nairobi as well as as in in the field, and that's going to be an exciting thing for me. Sort of, it's going to be mixed mixed field, but it's going to be fun to introduce this gentleman. Pass the torch to our, to our church leader, yes. Yeah. Pecker John, I'm excited to hang out with you all. I'm Twyla Brown, and I should talk about that one too, getting to know this amazing team. That's because you got me off. I did not. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm on the <laughs> I'm Mary Johnson. It's nice to meet all of you. I'm sorry I missed the last. Uh, I'm the one who wrote you the notes for the the others who have yes. already been mm -hmm. there. Uh, so if you know the name, that's where you probably saw it. Uh, I am so excited to share the gospel around the world. She was coming off mine. Paul? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Mingus, and I, uh, it'll be my fifth comment. I'm excited. Wow. That's that's cool. Cool. wow. Yeah. My name is Jason Leak, and uh, definitely uh, looking forward to seeing a different part of the world. That's just one. one. I'm Jim Hicks. Uh, I'm not going to be traveling with you. One of my excitements is one of the things that I enjoy is helping you come together as a team uh, to serve together. It's, it's fun to watch that happen. I've always experienced a blessing that I've never <laughs> expected. I'm going to say, being blessed in a way I cannot foresee. My name is Jeff Zanger, by the way. Uh, yeah. He's writing names down, isn't he? He's teaching He's teaching There's one of us. You're expecting us all to sit in the same Yeah, there's somebody else. Sure. B-L-A-I-R. Jim Hicks. 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 We may not have covered everything. Seth, do you have more? Keep yeah. going. Keep going. Uh, next one was seeing Catherine and Ilias. Okay. Catherine's mm -hmm. still there? Catherine's there. Okay. Uh, following the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And I put learning something new. It's my fourth trip. But it's I'm I'm looking forward to learning something new again. Yeah. Uh, chance to grow. I must not be very ingenious because I keep talking to you. I put learning new cultures. Serving my Lord and Savior. New culture. 
being a part of this mission trip and to grow closer with God. You exhausted mine. I've been assisting the medical staff who can make a significant improvement to people's lives. Yes. I'm going to put one thing down. <laughs> The opportunity to glorify God and uh, help with God's work. Spreading the good news from the time we leave St. Louis and return to St. Louis. Because you meet people, you know, you see this group and they want to know what are you doing, you know. And it's fun. Ooh. I wish I would have done that. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> you told them there's still time. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, helping people. Looking forward to another witnessing experience with the Lutheran Hour Ministry people. Mm -hmm. uh, boldness of witness, and it's been amazing to see us grow through that, including me. I actually exhausted all mine, but I'll add spending time with Twyla just so she can't steal this one. <laughs> 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 but I'm good. <laughs> Copied off everybody around me. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Uh, praying for and with others. Uh, the opportunity to serve. Uh, making memories with the team. Mm. Oh, and what makes you think this is any good of a team? You know, like said, you didn't specify good memories. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. It said very clear. Those you will have. Yeah, those will be some of the best. One of the ones that, I, that, that, that you prompted me to think of is to, to, to be reminded of how gracious uh, Kenyan Christians are and how humbling it is to serve with folks who have so little and yet have their priorities in such an order. Mm -hmm. Every time that we get ready for these, I am reminded of those remarkable, faithful Christians who in Kenya from whom we can learn so much. Uh, I'm more good sure that God has blessed me in my life. Wow. I'll ditto almost everything everybody said. <laughs> Amen. Other things to add that haven't been said yet? It, it will be surprising, well, maybe only to people like me, kind of small-minded a lot of times, how, how much larger the church is. I mean, how huge and broad, and, and we hear the witness of these Christians, not only the pastors and evangelists, but of, but of the people that we'll be with. Their, their faith is so raw, but their faith is so on the edge of their life and their living. Uh, they're unashamed with their faith. And uh, it, it's amazing to see it. And, and to be in a setting where you will experience uh, our liturgy in, in, a, in a raw kind of setting, and, and the music and the joy that's, exempt, that's exuded by the, from children on up, they, the, uh, they, they do a lot of echoing of singing, somebody in front's leading, or somebody in the middle is leading, and everybody else echoes it, and the kids are drumming the drums, and it's just amazing. Uh, you will see a joy in Christ that maybe you don't get to see here as, as often, and it's and on the edge, as you will, there. It's amazing. You're going to preach long? <laughs> if I get to preach, yes. <laughs> oh, you might not preach? Well, we'll see. We'll preach it. We'll see. It's up for discussion. First thing that came to my mind when I found out that I was coming to this, or I, I felt that ever, before I ever knew I was going to come to something like get into the chance of this, I felt if I was to ever do this, I think that this would be something that would make me a better man, maybe appreciate things better or, or more than what I've ever thought of, you know. And so that's one thing I, I'm looking to, to get that experience to really grab me. You know. And that sense of growth. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity. Paul? 
I find it interesting that we have to put this list and all this stuff together to go visit them, where <laughs> if you come to my house or right, yours, I think when I go somewhere else and you go to a third world country and you spend time with third country nationals, that things as simple as flipping a light switch on mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. power above us, mm -hmm. and you turn on the water and it's mm -hmm. fresh, clean water, and all those conveniences, and you walk in your house and you have air conditioning, and mm -hmm. that when you go there and you spend two weeks out in the bush and you come back and you kind of go, wow, you know, you really, really are blessed. <laughs> so it's, it's a good time to, you know, take stock of what you've been given. Sure. We'll have a debriefing time a week or two after we're back. That one of the, very yeah, uh, a couple things is that uh, uh, once you return, there are a couple things to do. One is to get back and reflect on the experience. And then secondly is to plan how do you share mm -hmm. what you experience and what you learn with our congregation in a meaningful way. And that's part of it. And, and there actually will be daily debriefing. You know, what, uh, how, how do you see God at work today? What struck you? What did you learn about yourself? All of those kinds of... Uh, how did you see God at work? All of those kinds of... Uh, uh, what, what's going to happen is some amazing experiences and, and to take time to reflect on them. Uh, how have I been changed? What do I want to do differently? What have I learned based on what I've experienced here? Uh, as you spend time in, in Kenya. I think it's time to head home here for some of us who are baseball fans. Could I visit, could I visit with uh, Jeff and Lee and Cess? Sure. And I guess Don, I had to know. And Twyla, if the, you could stay just for a couple minutes to do some extra schedule. Yes, part of what we're going to be asking is our previous medical team to reflect on what their experience in the clinic was yep. and to help transfer what they learned to the next medical team. We're not doing that tonight. I just want to make sure we've got the schedule together. Too. Next yeah. time we meet, we'll be going a little over team responsibilities and then how to live and work as a team in Kenya. So, uh, and we meet 7th, is that yeah. another Thursday? Yes. 6.30, and I'm not sure what room we keep moving around based on what's going on with it. Let me close with the prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it's exciting to be preparing a team to, again, uh, serve you in Kenya. And we ask your blessings on all of the preparations that take place uh, as this team comes together to serve you uh, and to serve uh, people in need. We ask your blessings as we trust in you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your cards. Yeah. Nice. Do better than last year. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We'll take care of us. How's it feeling all today? So um, I think it's did I hear you talking that maybe we need to squeeze in this quick? Are we, are, do I have too many days scheduled? 15 days total? Too long? I don't know. I mean, what I was wondering, and again, everybody always say that long, but if we're just put on our tongues and ready to come back. I agree. You know I agree. So if we've got, uh, if we have a five days of medical trip and we have one day in between, and we have one day, one day. Take care, Paul. Right, Glad to see you tonight. Nice seeing you. We normally have one day to get there uh, and, to, and to get in the field. And, well, you see that itinerary it has us getting there when? On the second? I just gave you that itinerary. When does it have us getting there? You've got the parameters. I don't have a copy of them. Pass them all out. We arrive in, no, I only gave one to, to oh, Jeff and Don. So it's finalized. Good night, Mary. Good night. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Um, when we do meet to talk this. Yeah, I, I, I want to think about the schedule first. So on the so we get in really really late on the uh, on, on the second of February. Okay. So we really arrive on the third, and we would probably go out to. Uh, to wherever we're going to be at on the third. Well, we Depends. would have to do that. Depends. Depending upon how Sean sets it up. 
I'll tell you what, let's, let's just assume for a second that the fourth is the first half. Okay. And we can just get everything ready on the fourth, right? Um, and then you have five days, if we do a medical thing for five days, with a day break in between. So that's you mean ten. Right. Um, and then if you had uh, a day of whatever, uh, safari. safari or whatever, that would be the 11th. And then if you just hung around the 12th, if you went on the 13th. Yeah, what time did you have us leaving? The 15th. And that's okay, I mean, but it's, even, even with that, this is not a very stressful. We're, we're, we're departing with on the 15th. So what did you do on the 13th and 14th? I don't know. That's, that's the thing is I don't know. I mean, we could go back out with a witness or we could do whatever uh, Sheldon wants us to. But if we were just trying to do it, if we were trying to do it like we did it last time, we've got extra days built in and we have nothing to do. So I would say we either find something to do or come home. I, mean, I, I don't think we need another day to hang around, you know. One day. So do you want to leave on the, do you want to leave on the first and come back on the thirteenth? The twelfth? Well again, if we leave on we arrive on the second. Are we going to two villages? No, we're only going to But I know we're not going to split up. No. But well, even I don't know about that. We have, because then if you do two question. different villages, then instead of like one village five days, right. two places three days. Yeah, but, tell me Go through this with me and see if I'm if I'm on this is right. If, if we get there at 8:30 on February the second, that's be really really late by the time we get on the bus and we get out there. It's gonna be low dark 30. Yeah, 8:30 at night. So so the second is pretty. They're really late. So the, the next day back is gonna be the third, and that's gonna be a day of basically just getting ourselves acclimated and rested and stuff like that. Okay. If the fourth was to visit the village. And witness like we did last time, mm -hmm. and make sure that everything's ready for us, and just prepare. Mm -hmm. Then we would do we would do the the fifth, Six. sixth, seventh, Seven. and when Sunday, and then take a take so a break. Is the ninth. Oh. Okay. And then take a break. Well, yeah, I don't know that would be. And then you do the ninth and the tenth. That would give us. How long we took that break? That would give us. We take the break on the night, so we would work on the tenth. So we would have that would be five days with a break in between, and then the eleventh would be our. I'll say safari for lack of a better thing. Yeah. And then the twelfth would just be prepared to come home. And then the thirteenth would be leave. That today we leave. Do we need? To well, that. We could do that. This gives us this gives us five days on the field. Right. Well, this, it gives us five days. It gives us five days of medical. Right. It gives us one day to prepare for it. It gives us one day to prepare for coming home. Do we right. need that? Do we need a whole day. One all day? Was, all was, my point. My only point was yeah, this last time. Which that was a mistake. Days. We didn't have that. Oh, yeah, we, we, you think it was a mistake? You remember how tight it was getting to the airport? Yeah, the it traffic? was safari and then pack and leave. Yeah, the it same was. Day. Yeah, it was oh, yeah, not day. good. Not good. Okay. I put that down as a let's not do it that way again. Well, we okay. also learned that it was very See, stressful. I didn't go on the safari. You can't have oh, too yeah. much time at the Mombasa airport. We found that's right. And we went in very heavy business traffic time and every traffic jam oh, there was we were in. Remember? Now I remember. I was texting back here asking for prayers. I remember. Because if we were going to miss that flight, we were going to spend the night in the airport. Yeah. In Mombasa. In Mombasa. You don't want to do that. No, well, we almost did. Yeah, yeah, we, were we were there plenty of times. So. so even then, it's still all the airport, you've got to ride that ferry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've got to leave plenty of time. So why is it that you almost stayed at the airport? Because of flights or something? or just wouldn't. The line just didn't go anywhere. And then we went uh, up and they said, can you help us? They said, sure. And they left. Never yeah, be seen pretty, again. And then we had this, you got to go to the back of that line. And we're like, no, we're in this Yeah, it was pretty loose to do this. Yeah. yeah, all I know is yeah. live and learn. Next time, I'm going to have all the itineraries. I'm going to have, I've already got that number bar. I have all the itineraries with all the confirmation yeah. numbers with everybody's passport. Yes. Here's our whole thing right here. Yes. Yeah, we had that in that notice. Yeah. There was a person that stepped up and said, 
Let me see if I can handle this. Well, done. She did it. And if we, we get there early enough, enough, then we can be the first ones in line. Right, right. Yes. So. Okay. That's your part. I thought you should have a heart attack. So you're saying. Fix it where we leave on the 13th instead of the 14th? Well, I, unless there's something else planned, okay. we literally will be spending two the, days to do... The, the thing to do is to check with Shallon to make sure he's not planning for there to be longer clinic time. Well, I, I tell you what, uh, Pastor Trump, I'm sure he's got other priorities. Mm -hmm. We're going to set the schedule okay. and he's going to fill in around us. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. For, I may try shower one more time, but... Uh, I think there, there's a lot of other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And so far, what you know, they said 14 is good. That works. We can do a good team with that. Yeah. Uh, they've done a number of things they've responded on, but some of the very most last minute details I'm trying to get here, I'm not getting any answers back. So, you do clinic in one and place part of that place. means you tell us and we'll fit it in. Is that from Shaolin? You're not getting answers? Yeah. Well, they're going to have this baby. He's yeah. probably all over that. that. I'm sure he is. He's got to be. He's got to be. So we weren't expecting five clinic days. We added one an extra day while we were there. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Like we weren't expecting as many clinic days as we had. Still, it's on 14,000 people. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I was thinking. Even if we I'm have sorry, an extra day, to be able to conclude the day a little bit earlier, still feeling like we saw everybody we needed to see, yeah. knowing that we may have an extra day. Every day uh, so far. I think it wasn't it later. Okay. It might have been later than five. Because it was we all dark before we got back home to yeah. eat. You know, and we're exhausted. The, the, the thing you might want to consider doing is doing more clinic days and finishing earlier. earlier. That's where, in other words, where you see the same number of patients, but you spread them out a little bit. Good. I feel guilty if they yeah. already want those That's hours the to get there. Exactly. You're there, it's like we're already here, what's an extra hour, we're already here. But we started, we started cutting people off earlier. Uh, so we were at 3 so o'clock. At 3 o'clock, when somebody would show up, we say, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 And to so judge maybe them. we need to cut them off at 2 if, if we <laughs> You know, and that can be the thing to do. Is Tent loads of people and, sitting there. And again, I'm not trying to be mean here, but if we were like the 13th, if we left on the 13th, we'd get back on no. the 14th or something like that. We have some downtime before we go back to work again. Because of the way yeah. it is. Yeah. I'm okay. coming back on Sunday and I'm going to be in. Yeah. That's a very good point, Jeff. I appreciate you pointing that out. Yes. I really do. That's a great. You know, I'll see, see what I can what do. What day of the week is in the evening also? Uh, if we leave on the first, we're leaving on Saturday. Oh, sure. I want to go back to work. So we'll depart on the 13th, right? That would be my... Okay. Let's right. see what we can do. Um, so when do we want to meet? Um, we're trying to arrange this kind of... We had it for the 7th, didn't we? We have... We, and I have it down for 5.30 to 6.30 to 7th yeah. to get... Now, what do you... And, but I'm assuming there's another meeting that you would like to have where you go over a lot of detail with the whole team. Well, um, what, what I was suggesting is, as a group, we get together and we say, okay, remember, we, we need to make sure we've got tents, we need to make sure we've got... Uh, when you say as a group, you're talking about the previous yeah, medical yeah, group. Um, the, group. the blood pressure cuffs, yeah. the electric blood pressure cuffs, the thermometers. Weight, we do the medicine plan way too Yeah. So if we had all that stuff together, but then I, I thought, and you tell me, Dr. Lee, if, if you got together with the pharmacist, and the uh, um, the other doctors, you guys could say we yeah, saw yeah. schistosomiasis and yeah, we gave away a lot of Motrin. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you were doing the prescribing. That's why I'm that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm not trying to leave the nurses out of it, but it's the, the, that whole thing was just about. I would like the, the nurses to have a bigger part than what they had. Yeah. I'm sorry, we weren't even. Right. I mean, we were smiling. We smiled a lot. And we so who makes that determination? I think we do. Okay. That's, that's cool. I'm, my whole thing about the second meeting, I think as a group we make the first one. The second meeting was strictly to do a, a shopping list for drugs.